Hey guys, it's Caitlin here, and in today's video, we're going to be installing Wayne's coating in my dining room. When my husband and I bought this house four years ago, we had what I would call a little misunderstanding. So half of my dining room got Wayne's coating and the other half did not. So today, what I'll be working on is getting the Wayne's coating installed in the rest of the dining room. So my plan is to first begin by removing this corner piece and removing the baseboard on this wall and this wall. I'm not gonna be removing the chair rail. Um, I'm just gonna be butting my Wayne's coating up to it and then later on I'm gonna silicone. I'm worried if I take off the chair rail that it's going to break. We made our own chair rail for this project and it's pretty thin because we had molding that we had to butt against. On this wall, there is a rabbit on the back side, and on this wall, there is not. So to avoid some frustration and possibly breaking and making brand new pieces, I'm gonna just leave this intact. Because this Wayne's coating has been on the wall already for four years, it is going to look slightly different than the rest of the room. And that's just because the knots have all had a chance to bleed through even more. When I installed this the first time, I installed it without whitewashing first. I knew that it was going to be possibly a problem because of expansion and contraction. But at the time we had a one year old and it was kind of difficult. We just moved into this house. All of our stuff was scattered all over the basement and we were just trying to get moved in and get everything renovated. So I just did it quickly. And you can see in some areas in the cracks where it has expanded over time. So this time I did things right and I whitewashed and clear coated them before I installed them on the wall. So if you're looking to install Wayne's coating, I would recommend doing your staining or your whitewashing, whatever you're doing to it. Get that done first because you definitely don't wanna see the bare wood in the cracks. This is just whitewash. I don't feel that it's really that noticeable, so it wasn't too big of a problem for me, but I did just wanna mention that. So I hope that you stick around and watch this video. DIY projects are really important to me. My husband and I, before we got married, I told him that I wanted to fix up houses, and that's really where the whole journey began. He was a person that was willing to teach and has an extreme amount of patience, especially for a slow learner like myself. So these types of projects, as we've gone throughout the years, have just helped me to learn and grow and use new power tools. So I hope that you stick around. Maybe you'll learn something. Maybe you'll teach me something. I am going to be starting in the corner and working my way to the window. I have a lot of pieces that will need to be cut the same size, so I set up a positive stop to help me get the job done faster. A positive stop is a set point that you measure and set up once. It helps save a lot of time when you're cutting multiple pieces of the same size. Always hold your piece between the stop and the saw. I am right handed, so cutting with my left hand may feel weird, but it gets easier over time. Now that I got all my pieces cut, I'm gonna head upstairs to start installing. And now you guys know that I wear weird tie-dye Crocs around the house, but it was the cheapest pair I could find. I am going to first start by putting some liquid nail on the wall. Getting the first piece level is crucial. If you get this one right, the others will fall into place. You won't need to check for level on each piece, but it is a good idea to check every few pieces to make sure that you're staying on track. Now that my piece is level, I'm going to use my nail gun and at a slight angle, running my gun parallel with the board, I'm going to nail some nails into the tongue of my wainscoting. Because this is my first piece, I'm going to nail it on the opposite side as well. I am going to have a piece of corner trim that will cover those nails, and it's just gonna make this piece a little more solid. Oh yeah, perfect. 
If you do happen to get a little off level, don't worry too much, just start correcting it on the next pieces. Let me know down in the comments if you've ever done anything with whitewash. Do you buy it already mixed or do you mix your own? When I do anything with whitewash, I always mix my own whitewash. It's cheap and really easy. So if you want to know how to do that, stay tuned until the end of the video and I'll show you just how to do it. Occasionally you'll have a piece that won't want to slide in, so having an extra scrap piece to hammer on is a good idea. Now that I'm to my outlet, I'm going to measure and mark my piece and bring it down onto my scroll saw and cut my piece. I was really happy with the way the cut came out. It fit really snug around the outlet. I don't know if I would have done as well with a jigsaw. If you have not seen my last video of with me using a jigsaw to cut out a wedding piece, be sure to check that out. I'll leave a link in the description. Now that I'm to my window, I measured and marked my piece. I used my scroll saw and the band saw to cut the notch on this window piece. Once I got past this window notch, I was really able to crank on it. I set up my positive stop once again to cut all my under the window pieces. I cut them about an inch long to run them behind the baseboard. It really helped that I had a wedge to keep the baseboard away from the wall because I was constantly fighting trying to pull it away. So by putting that wedge in there, it kept it away from the wall and made the installation much easier. And then at once I got to the wedge, I pulled it out and it fit perfectly against the wall. Third time's a charm. At this point, it was getting pretty late and it took me three tries to get this notch right. I drew a picture of the notch wrote down my measurements, but when I brought it down to the shop, I took out the material on the wrong side. The second time, I can't even remember what I did, but by the third time, I got it right. What helped me on the last two notches was to simply put an X on the side that the material needed to come out. It was just a simple little step that I was missing. One thing that I wanted to mention is that I used a combination square to mark out all my outlets. I use a combination square for so many projects and if someone asks me what tools should I buy to get started, one of my number one things would be a combination square. I was so glad that I waited until morning to finish up this project, but it still took me a few hours to finish, which I was kind of surprised about. Oh, I just want to be done this project. Once I finally got to my last piece, I had to scribe the piece to the molding using this little tool here and then I drew it out on my piece and got back on my scroll saw and cut out the profile on that. Once I got this piece pushed into place, it was time to put the baseboard back on and my corner pieces. Once I got all the trim nailed back on, I started to tape out so I could silicone. I used a old small tube of silicone that we had. This was a bad idea. It was really trash. I needed a proper tube of silicone and a caulking gun, but I was trying to just get this done and work with what I had. So I just did this corner over here. I smoothed it out and pulled the tape off. To make my own whitewash, I just use a white primer. You're going to need a stir stick, a cup with measurements, and to apply it, you're also going to need a paintbrush and a rag. When I make my own whitewash, I always use a one to one ratio. So that's what you need a cup with measurements for. You fill up the paint to your desired line. So if I'm going to eight ounces, I'm going to fill up my cup to the eight ounce line and then I'm gonna bring it over to the sink and fill up the water until I reach 16. So I have one part water, one part paint. Then you stir it up, it's gonna be super watery. That's how it's supposed to be. And that's all there is to making your own whitewash. When you're ready to apply it, just work in small sections. I think I did two to three boards at one time. And then the rag, you have to go over and wipe the whitewash off. I did two coats on this wainscoting for my dining room. You can do however many coats that you like. Once the paint was dry, I topped it with a 
varathane polyurethane. So after sleeping on it, I decided that I did not like how this wall turned out. I should have removed this piece of chair rail and remade it. What we're gonna do is remake this corner of chair rail, put a proper rabbit on the back side, and just drop this side down a quarter of an inch. And I don't think from that side of the room you're gonna be able to tell that the chair rail sits a quarter of an inch lower. Don't do what I did, do it the proper way and don't try and shortcut it like I did. So for now, I'm not siliconing this part. I do have to get a proper tube of silicone and just finish up around the windows. Silicone is a good way to just fill in those gaps that you might have left around where you notch for your windows or your doors, and it really helps clean it up and give it a nice, clean look. Well, thanks for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed watching me make my mistakes. I hope you learned something. If you found value in this video, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Stronger by Grace Designs. And hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on all my latest projects, tips, or to be inspired. You can also check out my website. It's linked in the description below. And you can also find a link on my banner. See you next time.